Hi, and welcome to our last discussion of our phases of matter unit, our final gas law, which is the ideal gas law. I've gone with a pirate here because pirates say R. And trust me, that's hilarious, even though you don't get it yet. The ideal gas law is given to you on your honors reference tables. It relates the number of moles of a gas to its pressure, its volume, and its temperature. And it comes from the observation that one mole of any gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. That's an important thing. Try to remember that. We're going to see it again in the future, so if you don't have it down after this, you're probably okay. But as you'll see, it will be very useful when solving ideal gas law problems. The ideal gas law as given is PV equals NRT, where P and V are pressure and volume, N is number of moles, R is the universal gas constant, and T is the Kelvin temperature. You're already familiar with pressure, volume, N for number of moles, and T for Kelvin temperature. R is a new thing. R is the universal gas constant. It's not something that you should get too crazy about. I give it to you on your honors reference tables as 0 0.082 atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin. But all you need to remember is that one mole of any gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. If that's the case, R is always equal to the pressure times the volume divided by the number of moles of the gas times the temperature. If I plug in my values from this statement, I'll get that R is equal to one atmosphere times 22.4 liters divided by one mole times 273 degrees Kelvin. Doing that, I get a value of 0 0.082 atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin, the universal gas constant. Let's try a problem that uses the ideal gas law. This is from page 17 of our unit three packet. What is the pressure exerted by 3.00 moles of a gas at a temperature of 300 degrees Kelvin in a four liter container? Pause the video, take a moment and solve the problem, and then when you're ready, let's go through the solution together. For this problem, we're going to use the combined gas law, PV equals NRT. I'm looking for the pressure. So the pressure isolated by itself is equal to NRT divided by V. Substituting in my values, I get that the pressure will be equal to three moles times 0 0.082 atmosphere liter per mole Kelvin, our R value, times 300 degrees Kelvin divided by four liters. Doing that math, I get that the pressure is equal to 18.5 atmospheres. Does this make sense? Take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we move on. We should point out that there are many other versions of the universal gas constant that you can use. Using the knowledge that one mole of any gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters at STP, you could really convert R to have its pressure units in any units of pressure and have its volume units in any units of volume. Your other option, of course, is simply to take the variables that are given to you in a particular problem and convert them into the units that are given in the R value you want to use in the version that you're given, atmospheres, liters, moles, and Kelvin. But in case you want to be a chemistry superstar, let's figure out how to determine the value of R in different values than the one you were given. Let's figure it out in kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin. In order to do that, R is still going to be equal to P times V divided by N times T. But now we have different values. Since we're talking about kilopascals, it's going to be 101.3 kilopascals. That's standard pressure in kilopascals. Times 22.4 liters. That hasn't changed divided by one mole times 273 degrees Kelvin. That hasn't changed either. But when we do this math, we're going to get a value of 8.31 kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin, a different R value because our pressure is no longer in atmospheres. It's now in kilopascals. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, you really don't have to worry about it if you just wanna make sure that you always convert the values that you're given in a problem into the values of R that you're given on your honors reference tables. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to figure out how to get a little bit more fluid using R and be a chemistry superstar, then you should take a moment and make sure that you understand everything here. If you don't, write down any questions that you have before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Make sure that you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can use the ideal gas law to solve for any variable when provided with all of the other variables. Could you solve for pressure, volume, number of moles, or temperature? You probably wouldn't have to solve for R. Also make sure that you can manipulate the universal gas constant or problem variables to ensure agreement. So make sure that you can change your R value if you're given your pressure in kilopascals, or make sure you could change your pressure in the problem if you're given kilopascals to something like atmospheres to use the R value that you're given. If you can do those two things, you're doing great. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below this video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.